Hello, welcome to the part 2 uh, identification of white blood cells. Now, in order to start this presentation, we need to refer to the first part wherein we have developed videos to explain as to how the blood smear is going to be made or the blood film is going to be made and how it has got to be stained. So with that, uh, we can focus it under the microscope and look at the different types of cells. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to, number one, identify red cells, platelets and the different types of leukocytes. Secondly, list the identifying features of all the cells. Next, state the normal percentage distribution of the different leukocytes. Then, state the functions of the different types of cells or the different cell types. And then, list the common conditions in the differential leukocyte count. Now the leukocytes, the total leukocyte count is around 4000 to 11000 cells per cubic millimeter of blood. They are classified into granulocytes and agranulocytes. Identification of the cells is based on the color of the blood cells as observed under the light microscope. Methylene blue is a basic dye which gives color to acidic components uh, whereas the eosin is an acidic dye and which gives the color to basic component. So in other words these cells when you are looking at them the red cells will appear red to yellowish red whereas the neutrophils will appear dark purple nuclei uh, with a pale uh, pink cytoplasm and uh, neutral type of color granules. Eosinophils, the blue nuclei will be there, the pale pink cytoplasm, red, orange or red uh, gra large granules will be present. Basophils will be identified by the presence of the purple to dark blue nucleus and dark purple to black uh, large granules, while the lymphocytes uh, will be identified by the presence of a dark purple nuclei, uh, sky blue cytoplasm, and the platelets will normally appear around violet to purple violet. These uh, granulocytes are of different types. Uh, now, these granulocytes are called as granulocytes because these are leukocytes with the granules in the cytoplasm and they have a lobed nucleus. They are the neutrophils, the eosinophils and the basophils. While the agranulocytes do not have any granules in the cytoplasm, that's why it's called as absence of granules. They are classified into the lymphocytes and the monocytes. Now another important thing is these cells contain, the, the agranulocytes contain the nucleus which is a single nucleus. Okay, look at the cell count as a percentage distribution as well as the absolute count. Let's look at first one, basophils. Basophils will be less than 1% and so the basophils will be less in or the least cells which we encounter in the film. Eosinophils 2 to 4 percent, neutrophils 50 to 70 percent. This makes up the bulk of the white blood cells. Next is the lymphocytes 20 to 40 percent and the monocytes 5 to 8 percent. When you look at the absolute counts, the basophils will amount 10 to 100 per cubic millimeter of blood, eosinophils 150 to 300 millimeters 
per millimeter cube. Uh, neutrophils 3000 to 6000 per millimeter cube. Lymphocytes 1500 to 2700 uh, per millimeter cube. And monocytes 300 to 600 per millimeter cube. So when you look at these cells, how is how they look like? First one, what you see is a neutrophil. You can see it is uh, almost double the size of the RBCs, which are surrounding uh, the, uh, neut uh, the neutrophil. And this neutrophil has got the lobed nucleus. Next one is the eosinophils. You can see they are also surrounded by red blood cells which are more numerous and the eosinophils have a bilobed nucleus and there are coarse granules which is taking up reddish pink color. Next one is the basophil and this basophil as you can see uh, contain the nucleus but the nucleus is masked by the granules because they pick up the same color of stain that is bluish black. Granulocytes, again the RBCs are there and you find the lymphocytes. The lymphocyte has got a single nucleus and has got a blue cytoplasm surrounding it. Then you have the monocytes which are the largest cell uh, of the white blood cells and they have also got a single nucleus but the shape of the nucleus is kidney shaped. So now let us look at each of these cells individually. If you look at the granulocytes, the first one is we will talk about the neutrophils. Neutrophils are around 12 to 14 in micrometers in diameter. Percentage distribution is around 50 to 70 percent. The cytoplasm is violet in color. The granules are fine and plenty and the nucleus is multilobed. How do we identify the eosinophils? Eosinophils also have almost the same size, 12 to 14 micrometers. Percentage of distribution is 2 to 4 percent. Cytoplasm is pink in color. The granules are coarse and less and they pick up the reddish pink color. And the nucleus is generally bilobed. Of the granulocytes is the basophil. They also have a similar size 12 to 14 micrometers. Percentage of distribution is 0 to 1 percent and the cytoplasm is blue in color. The granules are coarse and less in number and bluish black. The nucleus is bilobed and generally masked by the granules. The granulocytes. Now let us look at the A granulocytes. These A granulocytes, for example, you have the large lymphocyte, 12 to 16 micrometers in diameter. Percentage of distribution together all the lymphocytes is 20 to 40 percent. Cytoplasm is blue in color, single large nucleus. When you now look at the uh, small lymphocyte 8 to 10 microns uh, in diameter whereas the percentage of distribution is the same 20 to 40 percent. Uh, normally we don't differentiate uh, between the large and the small lymphocytes. Together we can consider them as lymphocytes. Cytoplasm is blue in color and the nucleus occupies most of the cell. The last cell that is under consideration is the A, A granulocyte that is the monocyte. These monocytes have a size of 16 to 22 micrometers. Percentage of distribution is 5 to 9 percent. Cytoplasm is muddy blue in color and the nucleus is kidney shaped. Let's look at the functions of the white blood cells. Functions of the white blood cells is important because in disease conditions you find that 
these cell counts uh, will change. All of them play an important role in fighting the disease. This is what is important. First one, let us look at the neutrophils. Neutrophils leave the blood to go to the tissues where infection or inflammation is developing. They mainly engulf and destroy the bacteria and fungi. Eosinophils attack organisms that are too big to be eaten by a single phagocyte, like the worms, intestinal infestations. Basophils do not attack and swallow invading cells. They release chemical called histamine that help in the body's allergic reaction to a pathogen. Also, they secrete anticoagulant heparin. Let's look at the agranulocytes. Monocytes are cells that are released into the blood from the bone marrow. When they get to a particular site in an organism, they may change into macrophages that engulf and destroy the invading pathogens. Lymphocytes are the fifth group of white blood cells and they are divided into three different categories. You have the natural killer cells which attack the tumor cells and some cells that have been infected with viruses. We have the B lymphocytes which develop in the bone marrow and then we have the T lymphocytes which develop in the thymus. But in a peripheral smear we cannot differentiate these different types of cells. Now let us take a look at the variations in the total count. When the blood cell count, white blood cell count increases above the normal range, it's called as leukocytosis. And when it decreases below the normal, it's called as leukopenia or leukocytopenia. So there are certain examples on the left for the leukocytosis, that is increase in cell count. Uh, you have the newborn, exercise, stress, menstruation, pregnancy and steroids. All these are examples where you can have leukocytosis. Let us look at the opposite condition where there is a decrease in the white blood cell count. These are examples of leukopenia or leukocytopenia. Starvation, typhoid, bone marrow depression, leukemia, cancerous cells. Now this is a different condition where the cell count will go above 50,000 cells per millimeter cube of blood. And let us look at the cell counts individually now. Neutrophilia is an increase in neutrophil count. Neutropenia is a decrease in the eosinophil count. In neutrophilia examples exercise, stress, menstruation, pregnancy. Neutropenia, children, you will find neutropenia. Pathological conditions, you find acute pyogenic infections, burns, myocardial infarction and after surgery. Neutropenia, pathological conditions, typhoid, viral infection, bone marrow depression. Variations in count for the eosinophilia is a condition where the eosinophil count goes above the normal. Eosinopenia is when it becomes less. Eosinophilia examples are allergic conditions, parasitic infestations, skin diseases. Eosinopenia, adenocorticotrophic hormone administration or ACTH. Basophilia, increase in cell count of the basophils. Normally they are supposed to be less than 1%. Chickenpox, smallpox, tuberculosis and influenza, basopenia, glucocorticoid administration. Variations in the cell count, lymphocytosis, when the lymphocyte count increases above the normal range, lymphopenia, when the lymphocyte count decreases below the normal range. Lymphocytosis examples, children, chronic infection, viral infections and tuberculosis. 
lymphopenia, AIDS, hypoplastic bone marrow. Monocytosis when the monocyte count increases above the normal and monopenia is when it decreases very low. Monocytosis examples are tuberculosis, syphilis, leukemia. Monopenia is found in hypoplastic bone marrow. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. We would appreciate your feedback on this presentation. Thank you.